We're losing more airspeed. I wish we had turned back. Yeah, I know. Since we crossed Windsor, the temperature fell and we started really picking up a lot more ice. Look, I'm at full throttle. We're only 110 knots. We've already lost 45 knots. Are we going to make the airport at Troy? No, we need a different airport. One with an ILS. Pontiac. Pontiac has an ILS. Detroit Approach is a 70 Kilo. But it's a 70 Kilo Detroit Approach. Go ahead. We need to change our destination to do the ILS into Pontiac. But as a 70 Kilo, Roger. Climb and maintain 3,500 vectors Pontiac. 3,500 70 Kilo. We can't climb. We can't climb. Too I've much got ice. It. Too much ice. I've got it. Bonanza 70 Kilo, maintain 3,500. Have you started your climb, sir? Negative, we can't climb. Bonanza 70 Kilo, the minimum vectoring altitude is 3,500. Maintain 3,500, over. We can't climb, we're picking up ice. Bonanza 70 Kilo, Roger. Understand you're picking up ice. By hitting 270, this will be vectors ILS runway 9 approach at Pontiac. Hey, Bill. Bill, come here real quick. This Bonanza 70 Kilo, he's picking up ice. I'm taking him out for the ILS runway 9 approach at Pontiac. It's probably severe because he can't hold his altitude. Call Pontiac Tower and tell him he's inbound. They might want to have the truck standing by. I'm going to declare an emergency on this guy. Okay? Will do. Thanks, Bill. John, I don't think we're going to make it to the other side of the airport to do this approach. Ask for a closer approach. Detroit approach, 70 Kilo. We, we can't make the ILS. We need another approach to Pontiac. Another approach. Bonanza 70 Kilo, Roger. Turn right heading 310. Localizer back course, runway 27 at Pontiac. Intercept the localizer. 310 for the intercept back course, 70 Kilo. Bonanza 70 Kilo, say souls on board. 70 Kilo, two souls on board. The story you have just seen was based on an actual flight. A flight instructor and his student departed Cleveland in a Bonanza bound for Detroit. They made a number of mistakes and found themselves in a life-threatening icing encounter. Often each mistake a pilot makes closes the door to one more option for a safe recovery. Ice is one of a pilot's most insidious enemies. There are no hard and fast rules. Every encounter is unique and to some extent unpredictable and different aircraft may react differently to the same icing condition. Every encounter has the potential to be dangerous. Accidents due to airframe icing usually involve experienced pilots. This video will help you open the door to more safety options and give you the tools to successfully avoid ice and to exit an inadvertent icing encounter. We will follow two pilots through each phase of flight. Rona is flying from Lorain, Ohio to Grand Rapids, Michigan. Her Seneca is certified for flight into known icing. Greg is flying from Lorain, Ohio to Dayton, Ohio. His Saratoga is not equipped with an ice protection system and is not certified for flight into known icing. We will present alternate situations to illustrate other icing challenges. The red film strip will designate these alternate situations. In order to present accurate and visually descriptive icing encounters, it was necessary to insert in-flight icing images acquired on NASA icing research aircraft. As a general aviation pilot, you have a tremendous responsibility. Unlike airline pilots who have an elaborate infrastructure to assist them, general aviation pilots have a greater responsibility for gathering, analyzing, and applying information to make the go, no-go decision. The general aviation pilot bases this decision on prevailing weather conditions, the aircraft capability, and must pass judgment on his or her own capability at the time of flight. General aviation aircraft often fly at altitudes conducive to atmospheric icing conditions. The threat zone changes altitude with season and geography. Even small amounts of ice can significantly degrade your aircraft's performance and handling. Airframe or structural icing will both increase drag and reduce maximum lift. This means the stall speed will increase and you may notice a decreased airspeed or that more power is required to maintain a given airspeed. Your aircraft will burn more fuel and the maximum range will be reduced. 
The drag can increase to the point where it will overcome the amount of excess thrust available. In this case, attempting to climb or even maintain altitude by increasing the angle of attack could result in a stall. The iced wing will always stall sooner, that is to say, at a lower angle of attack or higher airspeed than a clean wing. If you find yourself in such a situation, do not stall the aircraft. Be prepared to accept a controlled descent, possibly to an off-field landing. Keeping the aircraft flying and under your control is paramount to survival. Here you'll see two pilots, Rona and Greg, obtaining weather briefings. Greg, piloting an unprotected Saratoga, is obtaining his weather briefing from Duots, and Rona, piloting a protected Seneca, is getting a phone briefing directly from flight service. Our pilots need to ask two questions about the potential for icing conditions along their routes. Where is the ice? Where is it safe? Icing conditions exist where there is visible moisture and temperatures are in the freezing range. Visible moisture includes clouds and precipitation. The freezing range starts near plus two degrees Celsius and runs until about minus 20. Although aircraft can accrete ice below that, typically the closer to freezing, the more caution is warranted. Icing conditions do not exist when you are outside of the clouds. There is no freezing precipitation or the temperature is outside of the freezing range. To find out where ice exists and where it is safe, Rona and Greg need to focus on obtaining ceilings, tops, freezing level, pie reps, and any frontal activity over their entire route. This is in addition to the air mets and sig mets obtained from the standard briefing. No, that's all I need. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Are you going to be able to make your flight today? I think so. The forecast is only calling for moderate to light ice from the freezing level to 15,000 feet, and the freezing level is at 7,000 feet. Ceilings are 1 to 2,000 feet with 10 miles of visibility. The front shouldn't come through until an hour after I get to Dayton. Did you get pie reps? Yeah, from a Baron about an hour ago. He was over Sandusky. He got on top at 10,000 feet and was clear above and negative ice. You know, I looked at the weather for a few airports to the west of Dayton, and their forecast wasn't holding. I think the front's coming through a lot faster than they thought. I'm going to Grand Rapids, and she gave me a freezing level at 7,000 along my route. I got the Baron Pie Rep, but I also got a report from a Cessna 210 at Muskegon, and they were picking up ice at 4,000. Do you have any outs if you find the front's coming through a little faster than you thought? Yeah, I've got a number of outs with the weather conditions and the route I'm flying. First, I filed for 6,000 feet, but the MEA is only 4,000 feet, so I have room to descend if I need to. In fact, if I need to divert, ceilings and visibilities are good, and the MEA to Columbus is only 3,000 feet. I should be able to make it safely. Well, since they're not forecasting any ice along your route, why don't you just file for 10,000 and get on top? Because the forecast freezing level is 7,000 feet, and if I enter a cloud, that's forecast icing, and I'd be illegal. Oh, I thought it was only illegal for known icing. That changed. The regs forecast icing since the Saratoga isn't certified for flight into ice. Since I'll have to fly through it, I can't do it. I'll have to settle for six, but that should keep me above the freezing temperature. These pre-flight tools will help you open the door to more outs and make a safe go, no-go decision. Regardless of the type of aircraft you're piloting, your go no go decision should be based on whether or not you have a number of reliable outs along your entire route if conditions aren't what you expected if all conditions need to be just right for you to make your flight safely and you have no outs consider rerouting so you have reliable outs delaying or not going now in the next sequence rona and greg are going to their same destinations with a different set of weather conditions. Are you going to be able to make your trip today? No, I don't think so. Forecast freezing levels at the surface and the en route ceilings are 500 feet. I'd be illegal besides I wouldn't have any outs. The tops are being reported at 18,000 feet, so any altitude is going to keep me in the ice. Yes, I got a pie rep from an MD-80. Along my route today, he was picking up light to moderate mixed icing and a Cessna 414.
they were at my destination airport and reported severe icing. So I went to the ads website and they predicted icing along most of my route. Ads? What's ads? Oh, the Aviation Digital Data Service. Yeah, but you're still going to go, right? You've got boots. That's the biggest out there is. No, it's not safe for me to go either. The conditions are so widespread, I couldn't flight plan to stay out of the ice. And I wouldn't have any outs. The conditions right now at Grand Rapids are calling 200, a half mile, and snow showers below my personal minimums. Everything would have to go just right. And boots aren't always an out. Depending upon the icing, they may buy me some time until I can get out. And that Cessna 414 giving a severe icing report at my destination airport, I'm not going. Oh, you're right. I see. The light to moderate icing report from the MD-80 could translate into a moderate to severe encounter for a GA aircraft. Also, the severe icing report from the Cessna 414 over the destination airport is likely to exceed Rona's ice protection system. The PIREPs, along with the ADS weather report, indicate that icing conditions are likely to be severe and widespread. Aircraft are certified for a specific icing envelope. While this envelope covers the vast majority of icing encounters, it does not cover them all. Some aircraft accidents are due to conditions that exceed this envelope and overwhelm the aircraft's ice protection system. Ice protection systems are best used as a defensive measure to buy time until you can exit the icing condition. Don't assume that you're legal to fly in icing conditions because your aircraft has a supplemental type certificate for an optional ice protection system. An STC system indicates the hardware is airworthy, but its effectiveness in ice removal may not have been demonstrated. Only with certified ice protection systems can you intentionally fly into known or forecast icing. If you're not sure, check the pilot's operating handbook. It is very important to remove all snow, ice, and frost from the aircraft during pre-flight. Pay close attention to frost buildup. Even a thin layer of frost can severely affect aircraft performance. If your aircraft has been stored in a heated hangar, snow could melt and refreeze on your aircraft. Also, during pre-flight, be sure to check that your pitot heat is working. If you're piloting a protected aircraft, remember to check your ice protection systems during run-up. It's better to detect malfunctions on the ground rather than in flight. 7 Mike Alpha, cleared to Grand Rapids. Radar vector Sandusky, Victor 30 to Litchfield, direct Grand Rapids. Maintain 4,000, expect 8,000 in 10 minutes. 124.0, squawk 5346, released at 1815, void if not off by 1822. The time now is 1805. Okay, 29 or 5, Sierra Romeo is cleared to India 19. Radar vectors dryer, Victor 435, Rosewood direct. Climb and maintain 3,000, expect 6,000 in 10 minutes. Cleveland departure 124.0, squawk 5347. I'm released at 1833 and void at 1840. The forecast for Greg's route is 1 to 2,000 foot ceilings and unrestricted visibility underneath. Tops are layered from 6,000 to 10,000 and the freezing level is at 7,000. Cleveland approach Saratoga 295 Sierra Romeo is off Lorraine County climbing through 2,300 for 3,000. Saratoga 295 Sierra Romeo Cleveland approach. Rate of contact 3 miles west of Lorraine County climbing to maintain 6,000. Out of 2,500 for 6,005 Sierra Romeo. Greg monitors his outside air temperature or OAT gauge on climb out and notices the freezing level is actually lower than forecast. He is vigilant to monitor the threat of icing, always considering his available outs. 
Mike, we've got 500 feet to go and the OAT gauge is already at zero. I don't think we'll make six, let alone stay there. Yeah, and it looks like we're already picking up some ice. Yeah, I'm gonna see if we can get a lower altitude. Center, Saratoga 29 or 5 Sierra Romeo is picking up some ice, request 4,000, and we can take a heading change. November 5 Sierra Romeo, maintain 6,000 for crossing traffic. Center 5 Sierra Romeo needs an immediate descent, any direction. November 5 Sierra Romeo, roger. Turn right heading 270, descend and maintain 4,000. 5 Sierra Romeo is out of 6,000 for 4,000, right turn 270. Use the term immediate when it's necessary to avoid an imminent situation. Also, if you're requesting an altitude change, let the controller know that you're willing to take a heading change to expedite the clearance. Rona's protected Seneca is not immune to icing situations. She is now cruising at 8,000 with an OAT of minus 10 degrees Celsius, and she's picking up ice. You know, we're picking up some ice. I'm going to find out where the tops are. We'd be better off on top than sitting down here. Cleveland Center, 7 Mike Alpha. Do you have any top reports or icing reports for our area? Seneca 7 Mike Alpha, Roger. Tops reported in the area around 9,500, clear above. And we don't have any pilot reports indicating any icing in your immediate area. Over. 7 Mike Alpha requesting climb to 10,000. Seneca 7 Mike Alpha, Roger. Maintain 8,000 for traffic. I have your request. Expect higher in one zero miles. Roger, 7 Mike Alpha, maintain 8,000. Rona, should we ask for an immediate climb to get out of this ice? No, it's only light ice. Our boots will handle that for 10 miles. If it were moderate or severe, though, I'd ask for an immediate climb. In this situation, climbing on top is clearly the right choice. However, if the tops aren't attainable, you should still try to get out of the ice. Climbing to colder temperatures reduces the chances of a hazardous icing encounter and allows you more altitude to recover. There are typically five safety outlets and a priority handling device in any in-flight icing situation. They are climb, descend, continue, divert, or return. Remember, these safety outlets apply to both unprotected and protected aircraft whose safe outcome is in question. The priority handling device is the ability to declare an emergency. If the situation deteriorates and the safe outcome of the flight is in question, declare an emergency. This will give you priority handling and allow you to exit your situation as soon as possible. Consider climbing when you can top the clouds. Even if you remain in the cloud, chances are you will climb out of the icing environment or at least reduce the threat by climbing to colder temperatures. Climbing also increases your ground clearance should you need to recover from a control anomaly. Be aware of cloud tops, however. This is where icing can be the worst. Consider descending when you can get below the clouds or to temperatures above freezing. Even if you remain in the cloud, chances are you will descend out of the icing environment. Also, be mindful of your MEA and that you will have less ground clearance. Under no circumstances should you remain in freezing rain or freezing drizzle. Continue your flight if it appears you are in the process of exiting the icing threat. For example, if you're exiting the cloud. Consider returning to your departure airport when early in your flight, you discover the weather conditions are worse than expected. Consider diverting when you can circumnavigate an icing threat. Of course, you may have to divert and land at an alternate airport. In that case, the best choice may be behind you. Any course change requires communication with ATC. Be sure to clearly convey the level of urgency. Mention you are in icing. If you're unsatisfied with the ATC response, declaring an emergency will give you priority handling. By doing so, ATC is allowed to help you exit the icing condition as soon as possible. Recall that FAR 91.3 states, in an emergency requiring immediate action, the pilot in command may deviate from any rule to the extent required to meet the emergency. Often there will be no post-flight consequences to you. On some occasions, you may have to fill out some paperwork, perhaps more. But whatever the cost, it is up to you to ensure the safe outcome of the flight. Rona, we're picking up some ice. Light to moderate rhyme, I think. 
I'd call it moderate mixed. I should do a pie rep. Good idea. Call it in. All right. Cleveland Center, 7 Mike Alpha would like to make a pilot report. 7 Mike Alpha, go ahead. Seneca, 7 Mike Alpha is 5 northwest of Waterville at 8,000. And we're getting some moderate mixed icing in the clouds. We've lost 5 knots of airspeed. Outside air temperature is minus 10 Celsius. Number 7 Mike Alpha, Roger, have your report. Thank you. PIREPs provide a snapshot of specific weather conditions for a particular location and altitude at a given time. They are especially helpful for indicating whether or not ice actually exists. However, PIREPs have limitations. Because icing is often transient in nature, the validity of the icing reports can change. PIREPs are aircraft and ice protection system specific and are the subjective assessment of the pilot making the report. Even so, request and report PIREPs. Reporting a PIREP is just as important as requesting one, especially when conditions are better or worse than expected. Also, it's important to report the absence of ice when it's been forecasted. This way, forecasting can be validated and improved. The identification of ice type and severity is still a subjective call for pilots. There are three types of ice, rime, clear, and mixed. Rime ice has a milky, opaque appearance, the look of a freezer that needs to be defrosted. In many cases, rime ice either conforms to the wing's leading edge or appears as a sharp, pointed shape. Clear ice tends to be transparent and often is very rough. It can form horns, which will generate significant drag. These horns more significantly disrupt the airflow over the wing and tail. Mixed ice is a combination of rime and clear. It occurs in conditions between pure rime and pure clear. It typically appears clear in the center with white feathers on the side. Whether you're exposed to light, moderate, or severe ice, is determined by how the airframe responds to the icing environment. This response is a combination of ice protection system, aircraft configuration, flight condition, and atmospheric conditions. Light ice indicates that the rate of accumulation is such that occasional use of ice protection systems is required to remove or prevent accumulation. Moderate ice indicates that frequent use of ice protection systems is necessary to remove or prevent ice. And severe ice indicates that the rate of accumulation is so fast that ice protection systems fail to remove the accumulation of ice. You need to exit this condition immediately. Even though pie reps can be kind of a pain in the neck, it's important to make pie reps. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, when we look for ice, as we do in research, we use the pie reps as the single most important factor in finding out exactly where the icing is. Uh, we realize it can be somewhat subjective based on the type of aircraft you fly or your experience level. Uh, the flip side of that, of course, is interpreting the pie reps. For example, a Boeing 737 climbing through a certain altitude might report light ice when in fact it may be severe to a Cessna 182 that has a slower climb rate or in fact may be stuck right in the middle of the ice. So be aware and uh, interpret the pie reps. An area of particular concern for all pilots is a weather phenomenon known as supercooled large droplets or SLD. SLD refers to droplet sizes that are larger than what is currently required for aircraft certification into known icing and includes freezing rain and freezing drizzle. SLD will cause accretion to form beyond protected regions of the wing as well as parts of the aircraft that normally do not get ice. For GA aircraft, SLD conditions should be considered severe and extremely dangerous. Seneca 7 Mike Alpha. Climb and maintain one zero thousand. Seven Mike Alpha, out of eight for ten thousand. I'm going to hit the boots again. I thought you had to have a half inch of ice on it before you kicked them. No, it's better to keep the wing as clean as possible. Well, what about ice bridging? That just doesn't exist with today's boots. Until recently, pilots had been instructed to wait for the ice to build up to a certain thickness before activating their boots. 
It was believed that if the boots were activated too early, the ice might not break off, but instead expand to the shape of the inflated boot and remain in that position. This would leave a gap between the boot and the ice that subsequent boot cycles could not remove. This phenomenon was referred to as ice bridging. Ice bridging was attributed to early boot technology that had very wide tubes and slow inflation and deflation rates. However, recent technical and operational information indicates that modern pneumatic boots characteristically do not have ice bridging problems. No accidents or incidents have been attributed to ice bridging with modern boots. What you may see is residual ice, which will clear on subsequent boot cycles. Boots should be activated at the first sign of ice and as often as needed. For final authority on proper use of your ice protection systems, refer to your POH or AFM. Always pay close attention for signs of ice accretion. Usually aircraft components with a small radius or a thin leading edge will accrete ice first. Objects such as an OAT probe or wing struts will typically show the first signs of ice accretion. Ice may also appear on the windscreen. Pay close attention to the OAT gauge. In-flight icing conditions exist when the outside air temperature is about plus two degrees C or below and some water in the cloud is liquid. At the first sign of ice, turn on all of your ice protection equipment. This may include windshield heat or defroster, prop de-ice, fluid surface de-icers and pneumatic boots. Of course, if the pitot heat wasn't turned on prior to takeoff, it should be on prior to entering visible moisture if the temperature is in the freezing range. Even if your ice protection system is working, the increased drag from non-protected surfaces may still be significant. For example, a NASA research aircraft experienced a 36% increase in drag with the clear ice accretion on the unprotected surfaces with the ice protection system working. Greg is 10 miles northeast of Rosewood and 30 miles from his destination airport at I-19 Dayton Green County. His OAT gauge is dropping to minus three degrees Celsius. It is apparent that the front came through sooner than the forecast and he just crossed it. Greg checks his OAT probe and wing and doesn't see ice yet. He realizes conditions are ripe for icing, so he reviews his options. He knows he can't stay there. Since he's at 4,000 feet, the MEA, he has lost the out of going lower. He immediately queries ATC to get pie reps. Mike, I bet you there's some ice around here. I don't think we should wait till we get in it. Let's see if we can climb on top. Sounds like a good idea. Columbus Approach, Saratoga, 29 or 5, Sierra Romeo. Do you have any top reports or icing pie reps in the area? November 5, Sierra Romeo, negative. Stand by. 2254 Victor, what were the tops in your climb? Columbus tops were at 5,600, clear above. Light mixed icing, 4,000 to 5,600. Saratoga 5 Sierra Romeo, Amuni 5 southeast of Rosewood, reports the tops at 5,600, clear above. He also reports light mixed icing between 4,000 and 5,600. What are Greg's best safety outlets? Climbing offers the best option in this case. The tops are only 1,600 feet above. He cannot descend because he's at his MEA. To continue will only prolong his exposure to ice. To divert or return is viable, but more drastic than necessary. Roger, 5 Sierra, Sierra Romeo, request climb to 6,000. November 5 Sierra Romeo, Roger, stand by. Okay, there it is. We're picking up some ice. Approach us. 5 Sierra Romeo. We're picking up ice. We need an immediate climb. We'll take any heading. Saratoga 5 Sierra Romeo, roger. Climb and maintain 6,000. Leaving 4,000 for 6,000. Now, what if Greg's aircraft were so iced he couldn't climb? Columbus Approach. This is 5 Sierra Romeo. We're picking up a lot of ice and unable to maintain altitude. November 5, Sierra Romeo, say your intentions. 
Uh, five Sierra Romeo, we'd like to declare an emergency and get vectors to the nearest airport. November 5, Sierra Romeo, Roger. Bellefontaine is seven miles to the east. Expect vectors for the NDB or GPS 2-2 approach. Turn right heading 090, descend to maintain 3000. 090, leaving 4000 for 3000. Expect a GPS 225 Sierra Romeo. Remember, any time the outcome of your flight is in question, don't hesitate to declare an emergency. Good afternoon, Grand Rapids Approach. 497 Mike Alpha with you at 10,000. Setting a 497 Mike Alpha, Grand Rapids Approach Control, descend and maintain 4,000. Flight present heading, Vectors ILS, runway 35. 7 Mike Alpha leaving 10,000 for 4,000. Bob, why don't you get the ATIS for us? Okay. There you go. Grand Rapids International Airport Information Tango. 1855 Zulu, wind 300 at 5, visibility 2, mist, ceiling 500 overcast, temperature minus 2, dew point minus 3, altimeter 29907, ILS approach to runway 35 in use, departing runway 35, notice to airman ILS runway 26 left out of service. Okay, we're leveling off at 4000, and we're just on top. Look over there at the rainbow, right there around that shadow on the cloud, you see the shadow? Yeah, they look neat, don't they? And you know what that means, right? It has something to do with moisture, doesn't it? Yes. Definitely indicates there's liquid water in the clouds. And we're at minus six degrees. We're definitely going to get ice. I'm sure we will. Rona was able to gather icing information from the rainbow around her shadow on the cloud. A rainbow indicates the existence of liquid water in the cloud. If the temperature is in the freezing range, you'll probably get ice. However, this will not indicate the type or severity of ice. To get this information, you should query for PIREPS along your route. Seneca 7, Mike Alpha, descend and maintain 3,500, flight heading 350. 7, Mike Alpha, leaving 4 for 3.5, right turn to 350. You have the prop heat on? I turned it on when I spotted the rainbow. But you know, 3,500 is going to put us right near the tops. Sometimes that's where the worst icing is. And it looks like we're picking up some moderate clear now. Rona's just descended into the clouds, and she knows to expect ice. The question is how bad? Climbing is probably her best option since she knows it's clear above. Descending will only keep her in the icing environment since the temperature is minus 6 C and the ceiling is 500 feet. Continuing or diverting will unnecessarily prolong her exposure to ice. Bob, this is crazy. We're getting moderate clear. I'm going to ask to go back on top. What about going lower? No. The ATIS reported 500 feet and minus 2 degrees. We could be in icing the whole way down. If it was my only option, I'd take it and probably get out of this moderate clear. Our best option is to climb back on top. Grand Rapids Approach, this is 7 Mike Alpha. We're getting moderate clear ice. We'd like to go back to 4,000. Seneca 7, Mike Alpha, roger. Climb and maintain 4,000. The Grand Rapids altimeter, 2997. Greg is on top at 6,000. He climbed from 4, his MEA, to escape an icing encounter. The OAT reads minus 5C, and the tops are at 5,600. Greg now has to consider his next move. He is concerned that his destination airport is socked in. Flight watch, this is Saratoga 295 Sierra Romeo, 20 miles northeast of Rosewood at 6,000. Uh, Roger, uh, November 295 Sierra Romeo, this is Indianapolis Flight Watch, voice for Dayton, go ahead. Flight watch, 5 Sierra Romeo is 20 miles northeast of Rosewood, en route to India 19, request an en route briefing. Roger, sir, uh, Green County has no weather reporting. The closest airport is Wright Patterson, and they're reporting 2,000 overcast. Temperature minus 3, dew point minus 8, altimeter 3015, visibility 15, wind 280 at 10. And there was a pilot report about an hour ago from a Baron that reported light to moderate clear icing on the climb with tops to 5,800. Over. Flight Watch 5 Sierra Romeo, are there any airports in the area with better conditions? And November 5 Sierra Romeo, affirmative. It looks like Cook Field is your best bet. Their AWOS is reporting scattered layer at 2,000. 
temperature minus 2, dew point minus 9 -er. altimeter 3011, wind 280 at 10, visibility 15, and negative ice and reports for that area. Over. Thanks for the report. Greg's checked all his options. Diverting to the alternate airport, Hook Field, makes the most sense. Date and approach, Saratoga 295 Sierra Romeo. I'd like to do an approach to Mike Whiskey Oscar, Hook Field, and then request VFR flight following to Greene County, India 19. November 5, Sierra Romeo, Roger. You're now cleared to Hook Field via radar vectors. Fly present heading, descend and maintain 4,000. Approach 5 Sierra Romeo, I'd like to stay at 6,000 on top as long as possible. Saratoga 5 Sierra Romeo, if you'd like to stay at 6, I'll have to take you around the Dayton Class C. Roger, 5 Sierra Romeo, we'd still prefer to stay at 6. November 5 Sierra Romeo, Roger, turn left heading 140, maintain 6,000. Greg was fortunate enough to be able to make an approach at a nearby airport that had good weather. He will continue on to his destination, VFR. Even though it's going to take more time to reach his destination airport, staying out of the icing condition is paramount. Notice Greg did not accept a clearance that would take him into potential icing conditions. Pilots in unprotected aircraft should not accept ATC direction into potentially hazardous icing conditions. November 5, Sierra Romeo, you're six miles from Oneida. Maintain 3,000 until established on the localizer. Cleared for the localizer runway 23 approach at Hook Field. Change to advisory frequency is approved. Report back on this frequency upon completion of the approach for VFR advisories. 5 Sierra Romeo, cleared localizer. Maintain 3 till established. Clear to switch to advisories and we'll report back with you after the approach. 5 Sierra Romeo. Greg's decisions allow him to make an ice-free approach. Remember, if you make an approach in icing conditions, you could accumulate enough ice to make a missed approach, as well as a second attempt at landing, impossible. If better weather conditions are not an option, and you're forced to make an approach in icing conditions, consider a destination airport with an ILS. This will provide you with a more stabilized approach and increase the likelihood of a successful landing. Now, the weather conditions are much worse, and the alternator in Greg's aircraft has just failed. He is forced to land. There are low ceilings in the area. The freezing level is at the surface, and a King Air just ahead reported light to moderate clear icing. His best choice is to find a nearby airport that allows him to make an ILS approach. Do you think we'll be able to get into Greene County? I'm not going to take that chance. Since we have to make an approach in icing, we'll go to Springfield and do the ILS. We could always try the NDB to Greene County and go to Springfield if we don't get in. No, we might get so iced up we can only make one approach. I want to do an ILS to make sure we get in. My plan is to stay on top as long as possible. I know we'll get ice on the approach. We'll add 10 knots or so and then do a no-flap landing. Oh, I see what you're doing. And Springfield also has longer runways. That's right. Dayton 5 Sierra Romeo, we'd like to change our destination to Springfield. We'd also like to stay on top here at 5. Saratoga 5 Sierra Romeo, fly present heading, maintain 5,000. Expect ILS runway 24 approach at Springfield. 5 Sierra Romeo, roger. Fly present heading and maintain 5,000. Expect the ILS 24 at Springfield. Because there is a greater risk of pitch or roll upsets at slower speeds, most icing accidents occur during the approach and landing phase of the flight. Seneca 7 Mike Alpha, descend and maintain 3000 by heading 270, vector to the ILS runway 35. Left 270, ILS runway 35. Why'd you turn the autopilot off? I thought it could fly the ILS. Whenever you fly in ice, it's better to hand fly your airplane. That way you can feel the plane talk to you. If you're in icing, especially during the approach, hand fly your aircraft. The autopilot is likely to mask the first indications of an upset. If you hand fly, you'll feel the impending handling anomaly and be able to recover before it's too late. Hey, even if your aircraft is protected, you're going to continually build ice. Hand fly the aircraft. Ice that seems to have little effect during cruise can have significant effects when airspeed is reduced or the configuration has changed. 
especially during approach and landing, your aircraft is pushed toward its performance limits. This puts it at some risk for ice-contaminated wing or tail stall. Ice-contaminated wing stall occurs when the wing angle of attack is too high. This corresponds to a slow airspeed. If the wing does stall, the aircraft will either roll or pitch nose down. Symptoms of an imminent wing stall include airframe buffet and sluggish or ineffective roll control. The recovery from an ice contaminated wing stall is the same as a clean wing stall. Immediately reduce the angle of attack. Reducing the angle of attack reattaches airflow to the wing's upper surface. The wing angle of attack is reduced by pushing forward on the yoke and adding power. If the wing is iced, you cannot rely on your stall warning device because the iced wing is likely to stall at a lower angle of attack than a clean wing. Also, the stall warning system can freeze on an unprotected aircraft, rendering it absolutely useless. While a wing stall with ice is more common, an ice-contaminated horizontal stabilizer can also lead to loss of pitch control. In most aircraft designs, the horizontal stabilizer has a sharper leading edge than the wing. Therefore, it collects ice much more efficiently. If you notice any ice on the wing, it is likely that the ice has already been accreting on the horizontal stabilizer for quite some time. A tail stall or a pitch upset usually occurs during or after flap extension. Flap extension greatly increases the local angle of attack at the tail. Also, higher speeds or a high speed for flap extension further increases the tailplane angle of attack. Finally, if the thrust line on your aircraft is above the center of gravity, adding power will increase the nose down pitch and aggravate a tail stall. Prior to a tail stall, you're likely to experience some significant but subtle warning signs. At first, you may experience lightening of the yoke in the forward direction. Other signs include difficulty trimming the pitch and the onset of pitch excursion, similar to pilot-induced oscillations. If this situation progresses, you may also experience buffeting in the yoke, but not the airframe. In extreme cases, the yoke might want to snatch forward. If this happens, the nose will suddenly pitch down. To recover from a tail stall, pull back on the yoke to resist the nose down pitch. Raise the flaps and consider reducing power. The differences in tactile cues between a wing and a tail stall are subtle. The recovery procedures are opposite. You must be able to quickly and correctly distinguish between the two. The key factors are airspeed and flap deflection. A wing will stall when the critical angle of attack is exceeded. This typically corresponds to a slow airspeed. A tail stall occurs at a high enough tailplane angle of attack. This almost always corresponds to lowering the flaps. To recover from a wing stall, push forward on the yoke and add power. On the other hand, to recover from a tail stall, pull the yoke back, raise the flaps, and consider reducing power. When it comes to handling events, remember one thing. Undo what you just did. This might be all you need to recover. Whether you're piloting a protected or unprotected aircraft, here are some strategies to minimize your exposure to ice on approach. While being vectored for final approach or flying a full non-precision approach, stay on top as long as possible and practical. In fact, if conditions and your comfort level allow, stay on top until intercepting the final approach course and glide slope inbound. Don't accept intermediate altitude assignments in icing conditions. Be aware that this could result in a higher than normal descent rate on a non-precision approach. Keep your speed up. This will increase the stall margin. If it's snowing at your destination, chances are you won't pick up ice. If the cloud is glaciated, the water is already frozen. Ice crystals will harmlessly bounce off your aircraft.
Rona is on ILS approach into her final destination. The ceilings are at 500 feet and the freezing level is at the surface. Seneca 7 Mike Alpha, turn right heading 330, five miles from Caldo, maintain 3000 until established on the localizer, third ILS, runway 35 over Caldo, contact Grand Rapids Tower, good day. Roger, 7 Mike Alpha, right turn to 330, cleared ILS 35, maintain 3000 until established, call the tower at Caldo. Okay, Bob, we'll cycle the boots at the final approach fix and then one last time when we break out of the clouds. We'll also keep the speed up about 10 knots on final. Yeah, that sounds good to me. As busy as you are, remember to cycle your boots at the final fix. This will keep your wings clean during this crucial phase of flight. To increase the stall margin, keep your speed up. Greg is able to make a VFR approach and landing and did not accept a clearance that would take him into potential icing conditions. Dayton approach 50 Romeo, we have Green County in sight, I'd like to cancel flight following. November 50 Romeo, roger, squawk 1200, zero, zero. frequency change approved. Okay, squawk 1200, frequency change approved, good day, 50 Romeo. Green County Unicom, Saratoga 29 or 50 Romeo, request airport advisory. November 5, Sierra Romeo, Green County is using runway 25, winds are 280 at Niner, no other traffic reported. Greg is able to make a VFR approach and landing, but he still has some residual ice on his airplane from the earlier inadvertent ice encounter. Remember, ice, which has little effect during cruise, can have significant effects when airspeed is reduced or the configuration is changed. If your aircraft is, or you suspect it is, carrying ice, remember the following. Increase your approach speed. This allows you to increase your stall margin and make a safer approach and landing. Consider landing with no flaps or reduced flaps if you're worried about a tail stall. This will increase your margin. Minimize your bank angle. For example, if the aircraft is not aligned with a runway, don't make any high bank turns. Instead, use shallow maneuvers. Turns will decrease the stall margin, bringing you closer to a stall. And if you're worried about maintaining altitude due to the drag penalty, consider delaying gear extension until the runway is assured. This Bonanza 70 kilo, he's picking up ice. I'm taking him out for the ILS runway nine approach at Pontiac. It's probably severe because he can't hold his altitude. Call Pontiac Tower and tell him he's inbound. They might want to have the truck standing by. I'm going to declare an emergency on this guy. Okay. Will do. Thanks, Bill. John, I don't think we're going to make it to the other side of the airport to do this approach. Ask for a closer approach. Good approach, 7-0 kilo. We, we can't make the ILS. We need another approach to Pontiac. Another approach. After asking us how many souls were on board, air traffic control vectored us towards Pontiac Airport. By the time we intercepted the localizer, we were clearly well below the minimum descent altitude. We had difficulty maintaining altitude and were lead losing altitude at 100 to 200 feet a minute despite being under full power. Our major concern at this time was maintaining control of the aircraft. Fortunately, by this time, as we were three miles from the airport, we, were stopped, we stopped accumulating ice and our defroster was working well enough that we had good visibility forward out of the windscreen. We still had no sight of the ground and only as we came over the runway could we see downward and see the concrete, at which point we then put the landing gear down and made a very hard full stall landing. It was quite evident that we could not have gone another quarter mile. We did taxi out down to the ramp, and when I got out of the aircraft, the amount of ice is truly indescribable. There was ice covering the entire aircraft, including the antenna. The propeller spinner had ice about a foot long, and the wings had six inches of ice in a shape of a horn coming off the front leading edges. Having been through this experience and survived to both tell you about it and hopefully teach you about it, I would ask that you keep one thing in mind always, and that is to respect the power of ice on an aircraft. With the weather changes, I'm glad we made it. Even with all the route changes, we're only 20 minutes late. It's good to have outs. Grand Rapids Tower, 7 Mike Alpha with you on ILS 35. 7 Mike Alpha, clear to land. Runway 35. Roger, 7 Mike Alpha, clear to land 35. Rona, I have the runway. 
Okay, Bob, I'll take over visually. Rona, that was a great flight. Thanks a lot. The best insurance against an icing encounter is avoidance. Develop a pre-flight plan. Know where the ice is and where it is safe. Remember, ice can only exist when there is visible moisture and temperatures are in the freezing range. Be sure you know the freezing levels, cloud tops, ceilings, and any relevant pie reps. Also, be aware of any frontal activity along your route and up weather. Always build reliable outs into your flight plan. You may have to reroute to ensure this. If reliable outs are not possible, consider delaying or not going. Report and request PIREPs. They are the most accurate way of determining current icing conditions. They are especially helpful when conditions are better or worse than expected. Be assertive with ATC. If you're piloting an unprotected aircraft, do not accept ATC clearances in a hold, climb, or descent that would put you in a potentially hazardous icing condition. If icing conditions do exist, be vigilant to the cues of ice accretion. Pay attention to the areas of the aircraft with a small radius or thin leading edge. They will accrete ice first. Hand fly your aircraft in possible icing conditions. This will provide tactile cues to early signs of potential roll or pitch upset. Monitor your airspeed and or power settings. If you notice significant performance degradation, exit the condition immediately. It is always a good idea to work to exit icing conditions, whether the aircraft is protected or not. Never use the ice protection system as a tool of complacency. Typically, you can climb, descend, continue, divert, or return to exit icing conditions. Once you determine you need to exit, clearly communicate to ATC the urgency of the situation. If you do not get the clearance to make the required change and feel the safety of the flight is in jeopardy, declare an emergency. If iced, be careful of configuration or flight condition changes. On approach, keep your speed up. This will increase your wing stall margin. Also, consider a no-flap or reduced flap landing to increase your tail stall margin. Finally, if you're unable to maintain altitude, consider delaying gear extension until the runway is assured. Remember, these tools are the keys to help you open the door to more safety options and successfully avoid ice and exit an inadvertent ice encounter.